The current lightning fast pace of change for financial services didn't come out of the blue. Digital banking wasn't invented in the last year and a half. But what is new is all of the underlying changes in our society and the industry. When all of these forces come together, COVID acted as an accelerant. But we don't have to think of this as a negative. Instead, what if we consider the last 18 months as a change agent, a false opportunity for the kind of experimentation that otherwise would never have happened? Well, to look at this in more detail, Juliet Foster and Johnny Nelson spoke to Theodora Lau, founder of Unconventional Ventures and co-author of Beyond Good, and Wilson Raj, Global Customer Director of Customer Intelligence at SAS. They started by asking Theodora to describe the imperatives that are driving consumers' banking behaviours. I think if we think about how we live our lives, right, we, we are living in a world where consumers are used to getting what they want, when they want it, and how they want it. We've gone from visiting a physical store, remember those times, and ordering from a physical catalogue, to ordering things online, to expecting instant delivery of anything, from food to grocery to cleaning supplies. And so that same expectation is driving banking behaviors. Consumers, for the most part, they don't want to have to go to a physical branch for mundane stuff, right? Um, and getting cash or transferring money. They don't want to be constrained by the Monday through Friday banker's hours, and they shouldn't be. Wilson, in, in order to provide a better customer experience, companies, they need to have the right data, analytics, and insights about customers. What are your views? You know, data is absolutely the core, uh, I would say, enabler or even accelerator of this sort of reimagined uh, experiences for uh, banking or financial customers. Uh, but I think, you know, as, as important as this, as something that's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, above that, and that's really the mindset. Because if you don't have the proper mindset around how consumer experiences have changed in the way that Theo mentioned, then putting you know, new tech and then layering all, all thinking on top of that, is, you still get the same set of, of, of issues. So we ha you have to really layer new thinking on top of new tech or even old tech to make that difference. So data will become the activator from that. It, it'll help you truly have a forensic understanding of the consumer. It will help orchestrate the various touch points, right, from a consumer perspective, and that will be translated into what the, the banks or financial institutions have to do to construct the, the, those experiences in a very authentic yet automated way. Let's follow on from that, Theo, because yes, data is the key to it, but what do you see as the, as the main barriers to achieve the vision of authenticity, accuracy, free flow? Yeah, it, it's a good question, and I think it's a challenge uh, that a lot of people face across industry. Infrastructure is definitely one, right? If you think about incumbent financial institutions, they often have legacy infrastructure. So they might have a lot of data about you as a customer, but if the data is siloed, it will make it really hard for them to actually make good use of it. And I'll give you a real life example. So I've been banking with a global big bank for almost 30 years of my life. I've had three accounts with them, and I still do. One in New York, one in Washington, D.C., where I live, and one as a small business. And yet, to this particular bank, there are three of me. There are three sets of statements, three ATM calls, three checkbooks. Yes, we still use checkbooks in the U.S., and three logins for digital banking. So essentially, there are three separate entities with no linkages between them. So... They do have a lot of data about me, but they have a lot of data about three of me. And so until they can connect all these points together, overcome the infrastructure challenges, they won't be able to get the insights they need to use that data for good. I would love people to use checkbooks more here in the UK. It feels very official. Uh, Wilson, how do banks reimagine their digital customer experience efforts? I think one aspect you know, is the clue with what Theo said, right? You have that fragmented view of the consumer. And I think three is really kind, right? It could be even 30 or 300. And that's uh, on a multiple devices and multiple moments in time over a, you know, over a long period of time. So uh, on, on the banking side, right, they have a similar problem in the sense that they're very redundant and disconnected uh, technologies, right? Whether it has to do with 
targeting or segmentation or, or actually you know putting up content on in, in these various touch points. So that that is driving that. But I think in the end, the way you can reimagine those experiences is really at the end of the day, use data and analytics in a in a very prescriptive, very predictive ways to do three things for the customer, to know them in the moments of truth. And that would be really, in my opinion, three universal moments of truth. Informational, what do consumers need in terms of their, their financial uh, you know, uh, journey? Transactional, what do they want to do? I want to save money, I want to spend money, I want to transfer. Uh, what, and the last one is support moments, right? Uh, how, how do you need to help? And so how can you identify these three universal moments of truth and underneath that there are literally multiple examples and then to be able to wrap that in understanding and, and empathy, especially during these times. Yeah, and, and, and Theo, when you take it a little bit further, I mean, digging really deep here, what we're talking about is a huge dance which is going on between fintech, big technology companies and, of course, the incumbents, the banks. So what is it that comes into play when consumers have to work out where it's best to park their cash? Yeah, it's a good question. I would boil it down to one word, trust, right? So do I trust what you're doing with my money? Do I trust that you have my best interest or is it your best interest? And this is especially important as more decisions are being automated and, and, and to consumers, it's like a black box, right? So. For example, when it comes to self-driving finance, which is one, one thing that a lot of people are talking about, do I trust you as a bank that you know me well enough to be able to help me through all my financial futures or the different stages as what Wilson was talking about? Just like nowadays, we would trust the GPS. We'll get into a car and we punch in the destination. We know it will take us from point A to point B so well that we won't even give it a second thought. So will we get there? when we get to either a big tech or a fintech or an incumbent financial institution, what they do with our money. Do we trust that they will actually help us navigate to where we need to be through the life stages? And to that, I'll be like, I'll ask, when was the last time you actually talked with your customer? When was the last time you actually tried to understand where they are in their lives and what their needs are? Not a survey, actually talking to them, having the empathy, understanding where they are to Wilson's point. Just is obviously an imperative value when it comes to banking. Uh, Wilson, how do the dynamics between different players, uh, current and future ones, bring value to customers? And, and what role does data play? Yeah, I think, you know, firstly, you know, as Theo mentioned, you know, that trust is really important for all those different players, whether you're a fintech, whether you're an established bank, whether you're an emerging bank, and then all the other supplies in between. And I think here, the, the what data can do is to actually connect the intelligence about the consumer, about the needs of the consumers, uh, you know, in a very powerful uh, and, and accurate way. So, for example, I think in the UK, Rails Bank uh, partnered with um, the government, uh, other you know, uh, nonprofit organizations, fintechs. Uh, they brought all their strengths and resources together to be able to help small businesses and consumers during the, the the COVID lockdown period, right? In terms of making payments. Uh, and and so anyone needing help could actually get into this application called Lightning Aid uh, and get help within 24 hours. And we've seen time and time again, you know, that kind of value where banks are now looking at not just the core financial needs, but helping them save or maybe giving them alerts into how they can manage their resources better during tough times. And so data is central to all those, those elements. And Theo, the bottom line is that these questions, these issues, they're happening against this backdrop of the pandemic. And we saw that business models actually changed quickly in early 2020 because companies were reacting to the impact of COVID-19. So what did that look like for different segments of the market or the population generally? Yeah, I think one thing I'll say to that is, while we might all be in the same storm of COVID-19 and the impact of it, we are on different boats. So we have certainly seen more challenges being experienced by many in their society, including women and caregivers and communities of color and those who work day and night to keep our economies going and small business owners, right, that are struggling to navigate through the changes in how we live and how we work. But 
on the same time, we have also seen a rise of more community-focused fintechs and serving the needs of demographics that have long been ignored by income and financial institutions, including immigrants and LGBTQ. We have seen a lot of investment going in those areas and more empathy towards understanding what their needs are, money and beyond. And so my hope is that more of that will continue, they will come and they will stay, and we will be able to drive more purposeful solutions to support all of these communities that have been financially ex excluded. Because I, I think if one thing is, we have seen a lot of mini replicas of the past, right? A lot of different companies, regardless of their big tech or fintech, trying to replicate what we have done just with a beautiful UI. And we need more. The society demands more. And e economic equality is a human right. And that's where I think financial services industry as a whole can work together and change. Well, guys, sadly, that's all the time we have for you right now. But thank you so much for joining us here on Cybos TV. Wilson, Theodora and the Death Star, it has been a pleasure. Uh, please enjoy the remainder of Cybos 2021.